Hey, yo, what is going on, everybody? It's your boy X coming at y'all with a brand new video, and as you guys can see, we're back at it with another tier list. And for the first time this year, we're doing the pink diamonds tier list. I'm gonna go through the pink diamonds, diamonds, and amethyst you know, as we go on throughout the year because we haven't done it yet and rank all of them throughout. So if you guys are excited, make sure you guys smash the like button down below. And after we finish all of these, we're gonna be doing a best cards tier list. We also did all of the positions once. So if you guys wanna check out the PG shooting guards, small forwards, power forwards, and center tier list, you guys can check those down in the link in the description down below. A lot of cool stuff there. So, without further ado, we're gonna hop in here and show off, like we always do, everybody that's in the stinker of D tier. So, we have Elton Brand, Penny Hardaway, Luka Doncic, Brandon Roy, Peja Sayakovic, and David Thompson. Um, Elton Brand, it kind of just makes me mad that he is a, um, you know, exchange reward. Like, come on, you want me to go into the exchange for Elton Brand? Um, he has potential, but I feel like just, no, I don't want to, you know, a small forward, power forward with a 59 shot three. That's just not my vibe. Um, Penny Hardaway is actually kind of great. Um, really is a pretty niche player. You know, you like the tall guys um, that do a lot of stuff, but Penny always has some pretty meh animations. I do understand that this one might be a little bit controversial, but the highest I'd ever put Penny is C just because um, my man has no defense right now, despite being six foot seven. So if you want to put him up in the C tier, you know what? I can understand it. It's cool, but yeah, he's just not my guy. Not my guy, not somebody that I ever used. And I think the only thing that's saving him from being um, a disappointment like Diamond Magic is that Curry slide. If he didn't have it, he'd be pretty booty. <laughs> Although it doesn't help him too much just because he can't shoot the most amazing. But still a very solid card if you want to use it. Um, same thing goes with this Luka Doncic. I think he is a very, very solid card. But again, there's so many good you know shooting guards that I feel like you can use that don't have the lacking defense like Luka does that... There's, they're definitely better options. Now, Luka is still going to be an amazing offensive guy. Um, it's just the ability to not even add clamps is why I put these guys down into D tier. Because if they had the ability to add clamps, I could definitely put them up in the C. And you'll see we did that with a few other cards. But you just can't add clamps and all. So they're down here. Same thing goes with Brandon Roy. Pretty good offensively. He got the Treyberg base. You'd love to see it. But he just has absolutely no defense. Um, and you can't even add clamps. So no way. Peja Stajakovic, the worst pink diamond in the entire game still. Like terrible terrible pink diamond there's no way at all it'd be anything above d tier and if we had an f tier he'd be down there as well um and then david thompson david thompson i feel like could have been a really solid pink diamond um at least like a c tier pink diamond but man they killed it by giving him a 76 speed with ball my man has a 95 speed and a 96 acceleration but then has a 90 76 sorry speed with ball like, it just, it kills any sort of momentum that you can get with this card. He kind of has no chance, really, of beating anybody down the court because so many other cards have amazing speed, and he just, he, he doesn't, man. It, it kills it. Um, starting off the seeds here, we do have some pretty nice cards here. Starting off with Maurice Lucas, the new pink diamond token market card. Um, and Maurice Lucas, I feel like, is a very, very um, underrated card, but still... Um, there's it's it's a lot of guys that do what he does, but better. Um, he's mainly kind of like a defensive guy that has that like overall versatility there, and he's amazing at that, but just doesn't have the most amazing shot three. He's meant to be like kind of a post guy, and he's a bit undersized at the center. Um, there's, again, definitely some better options, especially some free options that don't involve tokens um, that I would for sure pick up over Maurice Lucas, but he's still, you know, a pretty solid card, and on defense, he's one of the best. Next up is Pink Diamond Larry Nance. Larry Nance, another card that I feel like is very, very, very solid. Um, kind of plays like that Giannis role. I just feel like worse. Um, has a lot of good defense. Really good finishing. Pretty quick as well. But, you know, he just doesn't shoot the greatest. We have some pretty bad dribbling moves. Um, and I think the thing that hurts is if we have that Giannis behind the back, I feel like we maybe can move him up into B tier. But yeah, Larry Nance, just not a guy I recommend. Um, next up is Pink Diamond Paul Pierce. A guy who I feel like... Um, in the beginning of the year, it was one of the best cards in the entire game, but it's kind of fell flat for me as time has gone on, just because he's, you know, lacking badges. Um, he's a good defender, really good shooter, um, can't finish the greatest, and doesn't really feel all that quick because he doesn't have quick first step. Um, if he had the ability to add quick first step, I feel like we'd be really killing it with Paul Pierce, but yeah, just, just a sad case of a card being outdated, which, you know, it is what it is. Um, next up, we do have... Pink Diamond Marcus Camby, a guy who I love because of his all-around, you know, defensive versatility, really comes out there and can give you a lot of solid, um, solid, I guess, aspects on every single part of the game. Like, plays defense, can kind of shoot, he can shoot from the midi, but can kind of shoot from three. 
um, and then on top of that just has you know some pretty good finishing some pretty good post games so overall you know just a, a solid card um, next up is Pink Diamond Amari Stoudemire a card that I love just because of his you know jumper but is one of those cards again that is severely offensive weighted doesn't really give you too much on the defensive end um, you can definitely add some things to uh, help him on defense which is why he didn't fall down to the D tier but um, there's definitely cards that are ranked higher than him because they can just give you a bit more you know defensively than Amari Sotomayor can but kind of meant to be one of those guys that you throw in because you just want to you know run and gun and go absolutely crazy and just kill it that way which nothing wrong with that if that's your play style and Amari's gonna fit that perfectly it's just I think not amazing for most people I'm um, next up is Pink Diamond Devin Booker the card that I was talking about like that you can add clamps so I think it makes him a little bit better um, I think this Devin Booker is a pretty solid card if we're being honest does a lot of things well has jump shot forward which is a beautiful beautiful jumper um, the only thing that hurts him again is the fact that he doesn't have the most amazing defense but you can make up for it by adding clamps onto him and if you do I think he's still very solid he just won't be the most amazing defender because everything else on that side isn't exactly helping him but he'll be an offensive demon um, next up is Pink Tom and Tracy McGrady, um, a card that I think is so good offensively that it can kind of, you know, negate to the fact that he's a bad defender a little bit, um, but I still don't think this T-Mac is anything higher than C because, you know, he just does not have the defense to really hold up with it, and you really have to hide him. He's going to be a great shooter. Love the trade break base. He's going to slash the basket. Great. Um, he's going to feel amazing on offense. It's just that defense is a little suspect. Um, next up is Pink Tom and Nikola Jokic, um, a card that... It's supposed to fill that really good stretch big role with kind of some defense, but he just has such a terrible jump shot that he doesn't fill it as well as he should. Um, is a great post player and is, again, an okay defender. But even with deep threes, difficult shots, you know, set shooter on Hall of Fame, he just doesn't really doesn't really do it for me. You know, he's just he's not like that. Uh, next up is Pink Diamond Michael Finley, the card that you get for getting to 600 wins in Triple Threat online, and I can tell you, I hate this Michael Finley card, man. I wanted to put him in D tier, but he does have potential to be better um, than that because you can add quick first step. You can add some defensive badges to really help that out. Um, and he also has Hall of Fame catch and shoot, hot zone, hunter, green machine, and gold deep three. So he's he's got great potential. It's just, unless you add those badges, he's a terrible card. I just, not a fan of Michael Finley, and I haven't been for a while. Um, and last but not least in the C tier is Kevin Garnett. Now, I have said a while before that I love this Kevin Garnett card, and I think he is actually very, very, very solid. Um, it's just I was looking at all the other guys we could run at the power forward and at the center um, ahead of him, and I just wasn't really feeling it too much. So Kevin Garnett did come out here, but he's still an amazing kind of defender, and to me, he's kind of a better Marcus Camby. So, again, if you want to put him in B tier, that's fine. Kevin Garnett's great. But, again, I, just, I was feeling some of the other cards that we had more. Uh, first off in the B tier is Pink Diamond Andre Iguodala. I got some slack for how I rated him in the overall, you know, scheme of things, but still kind of standing strong that I think, you know, Andre Iguodala is a very solid um, card all around. He gives you some nice finishing, some nice shooting, some really good defense, um, and you know, his playmaking is pretty good too. Um, I'm just really not a fan of the Andre Iguodala release, um, and they've really kind of killed the Pro 5 behind the back. Um, somebody kind of broke it to me that the reason I wasn't triggering the Pro 5 behind the back was because they nerfed the hell out of it, and now it's booty. So his one big thing was that Pro 5 behind the back, and now it's killed. So now he's just good slasher, good shooter. But again, to me, he's mid-tier. Solid card. Uh, next up is Pink Diamond Jason Williams, another card that I feel like is very, very, very solid. A little bit, a little bit slept on, because I understand that he is a little bit short, but... He is an amazing, amazing shooter. The playmaking is insane. You love the Hall of Fame quick first stab a dimer. Everybody makes passes off this, and he still has solid defense. You can even dunk a little bit if you add some badges to it because he has a good tendency as well. So add a Giant Slayer, a Pro Touch, you know, a Post Riser, and you're going to have a Jason Williams dunking on people. Um, Loki is an amazing card. He's just kind of hurt by the fact that he's a bit undersized, and his jumper's good. It's just not one of those top-tier ones. So I think B-tier is solid for Jason Williams because you definitely kill it, but he needs a little bit of help. Uh, next up is Pink Diamond Dwight Howard. Really, the only thing that hurts Dwight every single year is his um, just kind of lack of shooting. But I will say, normally I would rank Dwight Howard cards down to like C and D tier just because, you know, he doesn't have a jumper. But I feel like this year, just having a midi is good enough. And, you know, Dwight has the midi. He's going to be an amazing defender. He's going to be really quick and amazing slasher. Um, the post game is okay. Doesn't have a fade, but has a good post hook. And, you know, it's just going to be an overall really good Dwight Howard card. I mean, 
that's all you can really ask for. Just going to be Dwight, and he's going to he's going to play great. So if you like that kind of traditional big man with the occasional midi, pick up Dwight. He's going to be one of the best for that. Um, next up is Pink Diamond Patrick Ewing, uh, another card that I think is very very solid, but uh, rank below a lot of other centers because again. He just doesn't have that three-point shooting ability. He's a killer for mid-range. He's a killer in the post. He's amazing defensively. He's going to rebound beautifully. Um, but that jumper is just terrible. So even though he kind of has a rating, he's not really going to hit it. And again, I said he's a mid-range demon, but I hate the jumper. So for me, he's not going to be that much of a mid-range demon. But everything else that a center can do, he does great. Next up is Pink Diamond John. Well, again, another card that I've kind of caught some flag for and not ranking very highly. But again, I'm just not very impressed with John Wall. I mean, it's like... He's a good defender. He's not an amazing defender. He's a good defender. He's a lackluster shooter, and he's a great slasher that's quick. That's awesome. He's just basically a better Amethyst De'Aaron Fox. So that's why I really don't feel too inclined to rank John Wall high. Um, if that's kind of the play style that you like, not really shooting with your PGs, and you know, just straight driving to the basket, getting a lot of dunks, and you know, occasionally hitting the threes because he can do it. Then you know what, John Wall's your guy. He's gonna be a great card. Um, he's just not for me, not for my play style. So, B tier for John Wall, which still isn't really like I'm hating on him too much. Um, next up is Pink Dumb and George Gervin, who did get a boost um, to be you know a great card, but I still just don't feel very excited about this George Gervin card. Um, he's gonna be a great slasher. He's gonna be a good defender. Um, his tendencies, I, if I remember correctly, are absolutely terrible. So. Although he has Hall of Fame clamps and some great defensive badges, he just does not have the tendencies, I think, to be a top-tier defender. Um, if you add some shooting badges, he definitely can be great, um, and some nice playmaking as well. It's just, you know, jump shot 40, I think, off catch is great, but it's just not the greatest, you know, off dribble, anything like that, and his dribbling moves are very, very, very lackluster, so I think he's got a lot of good things going for him, but he does have some pretty big negative as well, negatives as well, at least to me. So I think B tier is pretty fair for a Garvin, because again, there's definitely guys that I would take at the three and the two um, over this Garvin. Um, next up is Dominique Wilkins. Um, one of the best slashes in the game, plays solid defense. You need to add quick first step and, you know, boost up the clamps a little bit. But once you do, great slasher, solid, solid, solid shooter, especially if you add range. I mean, just overall, really good card. Um, next up is Pink Jam and Connie Hawkins, who I realized had one very big um, negative and that's the fact that he has no dunking packages so yeah that hurts <laughs> Connie Hawkins is one of the most versatile defenders and should be one of the best slashes in the game but then once you actually you know use him and you realize he has no dunking packages then hurts him a bit but solid playmaker and again if you really boost up the shooting could be great but with once they add those dunk packages I think Connie or if they ever add the dunk packages because they haven't yet he could jump into the A tier but that's that's a big hurt for Connie Hawkins. Um, next up is Grant Hill. Um, again, another one of those really, really, really good slashers. He's a great defender as well. His playmaking's great. Um, he just has a jump shot one. And I think that's a really big negative to Grant Hill. If he had, you know, jump shot 40, you know, jump shot 4. Boom, we're talking about Grant Hill being up easily into A tier, possibly into S tier. But with that jump shot one, it's just so terrible. It's so slow. It's so easy to contest that it really kind of limits what he can do outside of the paint. Um, and next up is Gilbert Arenas, again, another card that I think is so, so, so good offensively, but then you get the jump shot, which I know some people have said, you know, I've got used to it, it's been great, but I think if you have to get used to the jumper and it doesn't automatically feel smooth, especially for a PG, that's a really big negative. So with Gilbert Arenas, it's just, you know, solid B tier. If he had a different jumper or the old base 11, Gilbert would be one of the best PGs in the game. It's just the current base 11 and LaMarcus Aldridge jump shot base just ain't it unless, you know, you're a big man. Next up is Pink Diamond Jason Richardson, another card that I think is really, really great, but there are some other shooting guards that I would definitely take above him because, you know, you just, you have to add a lot of, you know, defensive badges to really make him great, but offensively, he's an absolute killer, an absolute demon. He has great finishing, great shooting, great playmaking. Um, personally, I think Jump Shot 31 is very, very solid. Um, it's really good on Eddie Jones, and it's pretty good on Jason Richardson as well. Um, the only thing that hurts it, though, is Jason Richardson has absolutely none of the good, you know, I guess, dribbling moves that you would want. And it kind of hurts him <laughs> quite a bit. So, you know, there is that. So, once you upgrade him on some defense and stuff, he could be great. But I feel like it's just not worth it because there's so many other cards, you know, at the 2 and the 3 that are just so great. It's a pretty packed position at this point. 
And last but not least, into the B tier, we do have Chris Middleton. Chris Middleton, another one of those guys, I feel like that kind of just plays that 3 and D role very well. Um, he's going to play make a little bit. He's going to finish a little bit for you, but he's just such a good shooter. Um, and such a good defender that I feel like B tier is solid for him because, you know, he's not going to give you much out of sight of that 3 and D role. But for that 3 and D role, he plays it great. Um, now, starting off into the A tier, we do have Pink Diamond Anthony Davis. Um, might be one that gets a little bit of flack, but again... I think the guys that we had up in S tier were definitely better than Davis at peak, so we throw him up in there. Um, Anthony Davis is going to be a great defender. It sucks that he's you know capped out at bronze clamps. I think that's one thing that hurts him for me a little bit, and the fact that he's capped at bronze range again hurts me a little bit. But going to be a great, great, great finisher, especially in the post. He has great all-around defense. It just sucks again that he has that bronze clamps. And he's going to be a good shooter. The Anthony Davis jump shot is great. Has a good contest shot. Everything is really, really solid about this Anthony Davis. It's just again. I think we have one or two power forwards up in the S tier that I think play power forward better and definitely play center better. So we had to knock him down. Just didn't want to have to, it looked, there was too many people in S tier that I had to knock a few down. I'm starting off again in the A tier is Pink Diamond Michael Jordan. Another card that when badged up is an absolute demon. I mean, six foot six with a 6'11 wingspan. The Michael Jordan jump shot base is so smooth, so clean this year. He's an amazing, amazing defender because he's a 95, I think, 98, sorry, on ball steal tendency and just has amazing dribbling animations with the Pro 3 moving behind the back. It is just beautiful. It is great. The Athletic 2 leaner is also amazing. And then you add, you know, a three point shoe boost. You add a bunch of shooting badges because you can add whatever you want onto Jordan and he becomes one of the best cards in the entire entire game you just have to badge him up so we left him in a um, next up is pink diamond lebron james a card that i've said a few times that i really think is super solid super super solid but another card that i think really gets hurt by the you know jack of all trades and master of none kind of thing because he has so many silver badges if you turned all of the silver badges that lebron had into gold badges like most cards have right now you know eight hall of fame badges or so and then 30 or so gold badges LeBron James would be S tier. Easy. Like, no problem. <laughs> like, no problem with that whatsoever. But at the current state, with how many silver badges that he does have, I think A tier is solid because it leaves room. Because it, there's going to be another LeBron James card and maybe even another pink diamond that's easily going to be S tier once he gets some more badges. But this one, I think, is good. Just not amazing. Um, next up is Pink Diamond Dr. J. I um, really have nothing wrong with this card. He's just a bit outdated at this point, so he's lacking some Hall of or yeah, I guess he's lacking some Hall of Fame badges and is lacking um, just gold shooting badges that you have to add yourself, which I don't love. But once you do, he's a great card. He's super solid. The Rudy Gay base is amazing, and it makes this Dr. J card gorgeous. It's just, again, outdated at this point. Um, next up is Pink Diamond Josh Smith, one of the most versatile cards in the entire game that you could use. He plays the three and the four great. Just plays amazing on defense, especially all around, interior and perimeter. He can shoot three ball great because I love the Brook Lopez base. He's a great slasher, and he can play make amazing. Um... Yeah, nothing wrong with this Josh Smith card. I just don't think uh, he jumps out at me as like top, top, top tier because he is hurting a little bit in that shooting category. Um, next up is Pink Diamond Jason Tatum, a card that I kind of debated putting into S tier a little bit because, I mean, he looks amazing. I mean, the defense is absolutely insane. He has some great shooting, including gold deep threes. The finishing is honestly great on Jason Tatum as well. Playmaking is actually very solid again. Um, set shot 34 is the Jason Tatum jump shot and he has the Giannis behind the back, um, but his defensive tendencies are absolutely horrible. So again, he's not going to play as good of defense as you would want him to. And the Jason Tatum jump shot to me is a little bit slow and it's one of those ones that kind of pulls you into cards. So I think those are some pretty big negatives. So I think stats and badge wise, this Tatum definitely looks like an easy, you know, S tier card, but then like actually in game, I feel like he's a little bit lackluster. But you know, that's just me. That's just me. Again, you could have an opinion that Tatum's easily S tier and I'm capping, and that's great. If you personally like really believe that, awesome. I have no problem with it. Next up is Pink Diamond Giannis onto the Kumbo. Uh, you really don't have to talk too much about Giannis card. He's amazing in the paint. He is one of the best playmakers you could find, especially at the three and the four. He's one of the best, most versatile defenders you could possibly use. You could even run him at the center, and he's going to be perfectly fine playing in the paint. The only thing that hurts is the fact that he's just not a good shooter and only has bronze badges in there. And other than that, I mean, that's it. That's the only negative on Giannis, but it's a pretty big one because his shooting is terrible on this pink diamond. Up next up is pink diamond Derek Rose. Again, one of those super quick 
cards that you just want to get to the paint and kind of play great but in my opinion is definitely a better John Wall because we obviously have that good you know finishing that good playmaking with Hall of Fame quick first step and great defense but we also have Hall of Fame difficult shots you know Hall of Fame stop and pop we have gold catch and shoot gold sniper we can add any shooting badge that we want into the entire game on top of all of that so it's just so much better and we still have good tendencies we have the pro six behind the back which i also think did get a bit of a nerf which is why derrick rose is in at eight tier because it's a pretty big nerf um having behind the backs is pretty clutch for a lot of cards so derrick rose is still a beast just not as good as he has previously been in some 2ks um, next up is Pink Diamond Dave Cummins, another one of those guys I feel like that plays very, very, very good at the power forward, but maybe not as great at the center because he's a little bit undersized, but, you know, you can still run some undersized center. It just depends on who you go up against. I mean, you know, like Dave Cummins is going to get puffed by Patrick Ewing, but if you go against, you know, somebody who's just using Amethyst Biz Mag Biombo, Dave Cummins is going to feel like the best card in the entire game because Dave Cummins is just another one of those cards that has some of the greatest all-around stats in the entire game. He's a solid shooter, but again, I think jump shot one, it's just not great. It kind of hinders it, but it's okay on centers because most centers don't have quick shots anyway. Great finisher, great defender all around. Just a solid, 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 solid card for Dave Cowens. Um, next up is Walter Davis, who is basically everything that you were hoping T-Mac was in a slightly shorter card. <laughs> Um, he's just an amazing slasher, has the Trey Burke base, a great shooter. Once you add deep threes, he's going to be amazing, has solid defense, has Hall of Fame quick first step. He's going to be beautiful, solid tendencies. And again, the Trey Burke base is going to be amazing. He's again, he's a reskin T-Mac that's just two inches shorter with a slightly smaller wingspan. There's no nothing not to like about this Walter Davis. And if you want a T-Mac card that has defense, just sell this T-Mac and pick up Walter Davis. Um, and last but not least is Jalen Brown. Um, I did throw Jalen Brown in here because I love jump shot 70 on Jalen Brown. I think it is super easy to, you know, get centers with on the shot stick and easy to time as well, which means you don't always have to get a center release. He's one of the best slashers I've used once you add that quick first step, and his defense is honestly out of this world. So I think I badged up. Jalen Brown is definitely up into the A tier because you basically fix all of these negatives that he has on there and then has a Giannis behind the back, which is beautiful, which is clutch as hell. And it makes this Jalen Brown just a demon um, in the fast break offense. Seriously is amazing. And last but not least, we do have the S tier, who first off is PG, who's easily the best card in the entire game at this point. Paul George is just a demon. He's amazing. He's one of the best shooters in the game, one of the best defenders in the game, one of the best slashes in the game, and can still play make insane. Like, PG... If you have the MT to invest in one of the top cards and just have one of the best teams, you have to have PG on it. That's just how it is. Um, next up, Blake Griffin, one of the cards that I think plays the um, center position just a little bit better um, than Anthony Davis does. Because Blake Griffin, at his peak, once you batch him up fully, which I definitely recommend everybody does, is insane and easily one of the best cards in the game. Uh, all of his slashing is out of this world. There hasn't been a single center that I've really gone against that has stopped Blake. I don't even use him like that much because he gets that 93 point shot rating he has gold quick first step on his 610 self which is insane great defense all around once you add intimidator that like changes up the game for him but definitely would add other things like pick um dodger and clamps and then he's insane you can speed boost with blake you can finish in the post like crazy you can shoot the three like crazy you can add deep threes to him and he's just honestly out of this world and has a great contest shot tendency and great slashing tendencies he's just beautiful um next up is aaron gordon who is actually in my opinion better than blake at the power forward but also Aaron Gordon gets to play the small forward as well, which is great. Um, now I know, again, a lot of people always say, you know, we can't get Aaron Gordon yet, like chill out on that. But Aaron Gordon, you get the fifth ring this weekend and you get the sixth ring next weekend. Um, this pink diamond tier list won't be, you know, reposted at least for another month. We won't make another one. So I'm going to tell you guys where Aaron Gordon is so you guys know right now and we're very very close like a week and a half away from being able to get him um aaron gordon again is gonna be one of the best slashes in the entire game he's a great shooter it comes with bronze deep threes which is great has gold quick for step and downhill on top of his 87 speeds which is gonna be great awesome def defense all around has an 81 interior 85 perimeter 82 steel 88 block which is great he can speed boost he can dunk he can play in the post he can shoot the three ball like crazy his jump shot is nice uh He's just going to be a demon once we get him in game. Um, next up is Pink Diamond Wayne Embry. Um, some people were hating on the fact that I had Wayne Embry in an A tier and not S. And that's just because Wayne Embry is 6'8", y'all. 
Six foot eight Wayne Embry is not going to be an amazing center. That's just how it is. But as a power forward, once you add some shooting badges onto Wayne Embry, you give him a three point shoe. He is easily one of the best guards in the entire game because he has amazing finishing already, has amazing defense all around, and he has Hall of Fame Intimidator, which just helps out so much more. The gold quick for stepping downhill is beautiful with his 86 speeds. And I mean, he has a great jumper too. Like, absolutely love the jumper with the Giannis behind the back. Like, come on. This Wayne Ember is obviously insane. I know how great he is. I just could not put a 6'8 center up into S tier. Um, next up is Pink Dama, Stephen Curry. I don't even need to explain myself. It's Steph Curry. He's the best, one of the best cards in the entire game. Um, no longer the best PG, but it's still the best shooter in the entire game. There's nobody that I've come up against or used that has even felt anywhere as good shooting as this Curry card. Just love him. Um, next up is Pink Diamond, Kevin Durant, who was the best small forward in the game until PG came in. Um, KD just is so shifty and is so nice on offense. He's one of the best slashers you could use because he has that, you know, really long, lengthy Giannis build. He dunks on everybody. The KD jump shot is great. It is smooth. It is so easy to time, which you gotta love. And he still plays great defense all around because he, I mean, he's six foot ten. <laughs> Next up is Pink Diamond, Joel Embiid. Joel Embiid is just, again, I put him in my center's tier list as just that next level kind of center because he seriously is just a level above everybody else. He's a center that is 7 foot with a 7 5 wingspan, is great in the post. He's one of the best dunkers you could have for the center position. He's a great rebounder. He has Hall of Fame Intimidator, Heart Crusher, Brick Wall, Rim Protector, which is great. You can add clamps onto him once you boost up that rebound chaser. He's, it's over because he has Hall of Fame Set Shooter, Gold Catch and Shoot, and Silver Deep Threes. You're going to have a silver deep three center at this point in the game with Hall of Fame set shooter. So if you're getting him off the pick and pop and he doesn't dribble at all, he's going to be one of the best shooters in the game because his jumper is actually pretty money. So Embiid, in my opinion, the best center in the game. Um, and the last two, I kind of grouped these guys together. Um, J.R. Smith and Cameron Reddish, they're both really good defenders, really good slashers, and insane shooters. I personally prefer Cameron Reddish because I like the PG jump shot base better than base 49, and I feel like Reddish plays better as a defender, but both these cards are absolutely insane. If you need shooters, they're your guy, and Reddish, the glitch still works to get him for the cheap cheap, so if you haven't, at this point, you should because everybody else has Reddish. It's like you're putting yourself at a disadvantage so let me know what you guys think about this list down in the comment section below this is my last rankings for the best pink diamonds in the game at this current point in time obviously it's going to shift up a little bit when we get the new cards on friday but i don't think it's going to be too much because we'll probably get you know a pink diamond or two and maybe a flash set we'll have to see um like if you guys did enjoy comment down below again what you guys think of this list who's your favorite pink diamond in the game all that wonderful stuff and subscribe if you guys are new we are on that road to 10 take subscribers i hope you guys have a great rest of your day and i will see y'all in the next video.